Greetings YouTube, this is Toy Customizer Wake Angel 2001. Now, I receive in the comments sections of most of my videos uh, two of the very... these two questions, they just come up a lot. What, what kind of paint do you use and what kind of clay do you use? So that I'm not having to answer it over and over again, I produce this video to once and for all show everybody my basic tools of the trade. So, as for clay, it is simply this, Sculpey Bake and Bend Clay. It is a polymer clay, and uh, it is the brand that I've used the most. I choose it because, as a polymer-based clay, it hardens into something that feels very much like action figure plastic, and it's fairly durable. You can drop it on the floor without risk of it chipping or shattering. Uh, you have to be careful with it, of course. And I've been told that Super Sculpey is actually superior quality for what I do, but I've yet to I'm I've yet to try Super Sculpey for myself. So for now, this is where I make my stand. Now the paint that I use has been a big point of contention for a lot of people. A lot of people have told me that they've been using acrylic craft paints, and it comes out all lumpy and crappy looking. Well. I'm here to tell you that you can't just go down to the children's section in your local toy store and pick up some of those water-based acrylics. There's, there's a lot of different brands. The ones that I use the most often is this, Anita's All-Purpose Acrylic Craft Paint. Now it's a nice cheap paint. Each of these tubes only costs a dollar, and there's literally dozens of colors to choose from. Since the tubes are squeezable, their paints are easy to mix to make new colors and it makes a nice smooth coat with no lumps or runs. Um, and, as, and as an acrylic, it's water soluble and easy to clean up if you spill it. Of course, it's not the ideal paint out there. Um, acrylic, this version of acrylic craft paint is meant to be used on paper and wood, so it easily chips and peels when you use it on plastic, unless you're using a primer or a sealant. Also, it has a dull, papery texture when it dries. The sealant will also be needed to give it a bit of shine if you're using it for an action figure. Speaking of sealants, the type that I use is a matte Krylon low odor clear finish spray-on sealant. Um, this basically coats whatever you work on in a thin layer of plastic that restores some shine and it prevents the paint from getting chipped or dulled underneath. Um, now you gotta apply a very thin layer. If you put too much, it can start to drip off. So what I do is I basically just <laughs> blow on it to get all the droplets off and leave the thin layer to dry as a coat. Now, on my latest project, I began using a new kind of paint. Uh, this is Testor's Acrylics. Um, I thought that these might work a little better because they're meant to be used to paint plastic model kits. So I figured they would work better for action figures in some cases. No, Testors makes both acrylic and enamel based paints. Don't get the enamel if you want to paint action figures because it won't dry on most kinds of latex based plastics. Alright, so the Testors paints that I use um, they're really good because they don't need any kind of sealant when you use them on plastic. That's, that's the leg up on Anita's that they have. And when applied, it's nice and shiny. It's really good for a polished look. Now the downside of test stores is that they're a lot more expensive. Um, that little box had nine colors in it and it cost me $12. On top of that, these bottles are much, much smaller than the Anita's. So that means by ounce, the test source paint is actually like almost three times more expensive. Also, since they come in these little glass jars instead of squeezable tubes, getting uh, samples out so that you can mix them and make new colors is much more difficult, if not impossible. Also, the, the lighter colors, such as yellow, can look streaked or runny when you, when you try to apply it quickly. You have to be very careful to make sure this paint doesn't run. Also, it's a little bit stickier and more difficult to clean. Now, there is one problem that both of these paints have that I discovered through experimentation, and that is they don't work on polymer clay. Um, 
in both the Anita's acrylic paint and the Testor's acrylic paint, whenever I use them on polymer clay, they, they retain a slightly sticky texture. And in one case, the Testor's paint practically turned into glue on the figure, forcing me to completely dismantle every clay part on it and start over again, which cost me days of work. Still kind of pissing me off. Um, I'm told that different brands, such as Citadel paints, do properly dry on polymer clay. But I never had a chance to use Citadel paints, so I'm only going by what I've been told. Also, I'm not sure if these paints would dry on different types of clay, um, such as Super Sculpey or Sculpey 3. I'm not sure. I have not yet tried it, and if you want to experiment, go ahead. I'm just saying that if you're going to use these kinds of paints, don't paint them onto polymer clay because they'll remain sticky and won't properly dry. Well, this is Toy Customizer Wake Angel 2001, hoping that your questions have been answered.